After seeing all this gear, I think it's safe to say this is going to be a fun build. Now, yes, if you've been following along on the channel, you know that I'm currently working on starting a new build in a Ford F-150. Now, hold up, wait a minute. Even if you don't have an F-150, I wanna give you guys some information in this video that will help you along with picking out car audio gear regardless of what vehicle it is for. We've got several different boxes here that we need to take a look inside of, and along the way, I'm gonna give you guys some insight on why I picked each of these different items. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Now, when you're getting started with a car audio build, you of course want to consider what is the main goal of that system? Is it a sound quality build? Is it meant to just be a fun, loud output build? Is it meant to be strictly SPL? These are all things you have to consider. And for this project, I want a build that has good sound quality, but I also want a build that has plenty of bass, kind of a middle of the road build, if you will. It's gonna be nice and fun. And we're gonna start with taking a look at the speakers that I've selected. So for the speakers up front in this project, I'm going with the JL C3 component set. Let's get these opened up. So I've used the C3 component set in several different builds now, and what I really like about it is it's a great mid-budget speaker. Not only does it provide a ton of output and remain crystal clear, it also does a really, really good job at mid-bass. Now one of the other really unique characteristics about the C3 speakers is these are convertible between a coaxial set, you can see we have the woofer and the tweeter, or we can turn these into a component. And the way that that works is we can take out the this little center piece here and we can then add this piece on the inside and this will hold this tweeter. What's nice about that functionality is I feel like you can look at this speaker set as sort of an investment. As an example, in the F-150, we have a door location that I'll be using for the woofers and then we have a tweeter location up in the A pillar but that might not be the case for every vehicle. So if I want to invest in these speakers and let's say that I trade in the F-150 or get rid of it in the future and I wanna use these speakers in another vehicle and let's say that that vehicle doesn't have a factory location for the tweeter, it's no big deal. I can easily switch these into more of a coaxial style configuration. So of course, along with the mount to mount the tweeter and the speaker, we also get a mount for mounting it into an A-pillar location or into a door panel, whatever other location, if you did wanna mount that tweeter separate. And we also get, of course, our passive crossover, which this is up to us if we wanna use this or not based on our system design. Overall with the C3s, a great flexible design and these are rated at 75 watts RMS, which is gonna be perfect with the amplifiers that I'm gonna show you guys in a second here. And not only am I going to be running one of these sets up front, I've also got a set for in the back, these will be in that coaxial style configuration that we talked about in the rear doors. Now, as a quick side note, a question that often comes up when we are selecting gear for a car audio system is, you know, how do you know which size speakers are going to fit into the factory locations in the vehicle? You have to not only worry about the actual size of the speaker, but you have to worry about things like the mounting depth of the speaker. Is there enough room or is the window rolling down inside the door cavity going to hit the magnet? We obviously want to avoid that, so that's why I recommend that you guys check out monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. So on the Crutchfield website, we can enter the year, make, and model of our vehicle, and then they've done a ton of research that allows us to know exactly which size speakers are going to fit into the vehicle, and if we are upgrading things like the head unit, they will tell us what wiring harnesses we're going to need. They help us out with all the different gear that we need to pick for that exact vehicle. I've used Crutchfield for many, many years, long before I ever started the channel. If you guys want to check them out and get a special offer for you guys, car audio fabrication fans, you can do so here at the link on screen. Now, obviously we need to power all these speakers. So what amplifiers are we using? Let's get these out of the box here. We've got two of these guys here. This is the JL Audio XD200 slash two V2. Pull this on out of the packaging. That way you guys can take a look. So the first question, why two two channels? Why not a single four channel? This is just because right now, it's currently 2021. You guys are probably familiar with how there are all sorts of supply chain issues and the four channel amplifier wasn't available, but I was able to get my hands on two of these two channel amps really quickly. And these are nice and compact, as you can see. 
So no big deal there. We're just going to be installing two for a total of four channels. And the only thing that's really going to change here is I just have to do a little bit more wiring. So these amplifiers will be powering the front and rear speakers. And why did I pick these? Well, first of all, I mentioned that these are nice and compact. These amplifiers are going to need to go behind the rear seat of the truck. So they need to be nice and small and these should fit really well. Now these amps will produce 200 watts if ran at two ohms per channel. In my case, I'll be using a four ohm load per channel, which is 75 watts per channel. Are there other 200 watt amps out there that are this size or smaller? Of course there are, but what these really excel at is their sound quality. These have JL Audio's patented Next D switching technology built in, which allows them to be extremely efficient, but also to sound really, really good. These have differential balanced inputs, and we can check that real quick. If we check continuity across the ground terminal here to the outside of the RCA, there is no continuity on those inputs. So what does that differential balanced input mean? That means when we use a twisted pair RCA cable to send signal into this amplifier, we are not going to have any noise coming into the system. This technology rejects alternator whine, it rejects other system noise that is common. This is gonna be nice and noise free. You can see that the heat sink on the amplifier here is unique. I really like the look of these amps. And this also has advanced thermal rollback protection. That way we can't overdrive the amp. The amplifier will protect itself regardless of how hard we are beating on it and especially for a system like this where we know we want to play loud and of course clean, we definitely want that little bit of protection for those times that we might be getting a little bit wild. And you'll notice that these ship without the badge on them and that's intentional because you never know what orientation these amplifiers are going to end up in, especially when they're in a tight spot like behind the seat of a truck. So we can apply that logo after these are installed. That way it's in the correct orientation. Now we of course have the subwoofer amplifier and the subwoofers to still talk about, but we do have to consider how are we going to control the signal that's being sent from our radio to all of these amplifiers. We wanna make sure that we have the ability to do time alignment. We wanna have equalization on each of these channels and we wanna be able to control our crossovers. So for that, we're gonna be using the Audio Control DM810 Digital Signal Processor. So the DM810 here, if you're not familiar with what a DSP is, I definitely recommend that you check out my DSP misconceptions video that I just made. I'll put a link up in the corner of the screen, but this is going to allow me to control that time alignment, crossovers, equalization, all those things I just mentioned. And this gives me 10 total channels of output that I can control. Now, if you've been following along, I plan on using the front speakers using that passive crossover, so that's two channels and then the rear is going to be two channels and then the subwoofers will be one channel. So technically I only need five channels of control right now, but something that I definitely recommend for you guys when you're planning out a car audio system like this is think about what you might want to do in the future. In the future on the F-150 build, I might want to do a component three-way set up front. So that would mean two tweeters, two mid-ranges and two woofers in the front doors. And I'd want to run them all active. So that would be six total channels. And then you add in the rear channels, so that's seven and eight, and then you add in the subwoofers, so that's nine channels now of control that you need. So even though I might not be using all 10 of the channels of output right now, this does give me some possibilities in the future for future expansion. And again, even if I were to get rid of this vehicle and wanna switch this gear to another vehicle, now I have more flexibility. There is another model of the DM processor. It's a DM-608, and the difference being there, it has six channels of input and eight channels of output. And the price difference between those two models is only $100, so why not go for the bigger, more expansive unit if you need it in the future. Feature-wise on this DSP, I also like that it has the differential balanced inputs and outputs, so we could use those twisted pair RCA signal cables. We'll be able to stay nice and noise free. If we look at the packaging here, we can see a screenshot of the program that we use on our computer or on our cell phone or tablet in order to tune this processor. And I really like the design of this program. I find that it's very easy to quickly set up and tune as needed. 
Now I've already installed an aftermarket head unit into the F-150, so I don't necessarily need the OEM integration features that this DSP has, but just so that you guys know, this does have high level inputs, so speaker level inputs. It does have AccuBase, which allows us to restore that base that a lot of OEM systems will roll off in order to protect their inexpensive stock speakers. So we can bring that base back into the fray. Lots of different options here that allow it to be used with a stock head unit if need be. Now let's start talking about the subwoofers and subwoofer amplifier. Let's get this guy out. Oh, the JL Audio RD1500 slash one. Right off the bat, a unique feature that they advertise here on the packaging is this is not only 1500 watts RMS rated at one ohm, it's also that same rating at two ohms. So when we talk about that concept of planning for future upgrades and making changes to your system, I really like that feature. As an example, let's say that we have two subwoofers right now that we're gonna use this amplifier at two ohms at 1500 watts RMS, but let's say in the future that we wanna switch things up and maybe go to some different subwoofers that we wanna have four of them, and we still wanna keep that 1500 watts RMS, we just have more functionality here for using those different loads. So this amplifier is quite long. After all, it is a 1500 watts rated amplifier, but I do like that it is not very deep in this dimension from here to here. This compact size here should give me some nice mounting flexibility for going behind the seat. Once again, this has JL Audio's Next D switching technology built into it. You can see the little logo for that right there. This allows it to have great sound quality with very low noise and distortion. Once again, the theme here, we've got differential balanced inputs. There is not gonna be any noise on this system whatsoever. Tons of other features here. I think we'll make a full video focused on this amplifier. Let me know if you guys would like to see that. One feature I do wanna highlight is this does have a clipping light built in. That way we can easily and quickly set our input sensitivity control right here. A few other quick highlights, we've got that switch there that we can switch between one ohm or two ohm depending on how we're wiring our subwoofers and what subwoofers we're using. And the plate of the amplifier, once again, it has that logo not attached quite yet. We'll attach it once we finalize the install, that way we have the correct orientation. Little details like that, like having a logo upside down can drive me nuts, so it is nice to have that. Now with 1500 watts of power planned for the subwoofer amplifier, what do you guys think that we're doing for the subs? Let me show you. So we're not doing one. We're not doing two. We're not even doing three. But that's right, you've already guessed it, my friends. We are doing four JL Audio 10 TW1 subwoofers. Seeing the four right here, this is going to be a fun project. We're of course doing these under the seat. I did two of these 10 TW1s in the recent Wrangler project that we did here on the channel and that thing slammed and sounded awesome. So I cannot even imagine how four is going to be. Let's take a closer look at one of these. So I went ahead and removed one of the grills from these so that we could take a closer look at this subwoofer. But check this thing out. This is what I like to call a true shallow mount subwoofer. And the reason for that is, well, a couple of things. When we look at the back side of the sub here, the first thing you might notice is there's no pull vent in the middle of the subwoofer. A lot of subwoofers will have a pull vent in the backside here to help vent out some of that air and keep things nice and cool. But the problem with that is if there is a pull vent on the back of the subwoofer, you can no longer have something close to that vent because it's gonna block the vent, it's gonna restrict that air. So this is a true shallow mount subwoofer because let's say that this is the inside surface of the box here, we can have this sub nice and close to it. If we look at the side of the subwoofer here, you can see that there are nice big holes here to allow cooling into the voice coil. And this whole design that you see on the inside here, this is part of JL Audio's patented concentric tube suspension design. The main design benefit here is this shifts more of the motor system towards the front of the subwoofer. And by doing that, they can have a much larger excursion. In other words, how far the subwoofer moves in and out within this small space. Now I mentioned I'm gonna be using these under seat in the truck, and that's obviously a really tight, small location. So a couple of other design things that are really nice about these. When you look at them from the side, they look rather large, but what you have to understand about the design of this subwoofer is the excursion right here of the subwoofer coming out, it does not extend past this plane. In other words, the excursion never comes out past this point. 
The reason that's nice to know is when you're building a subwoofer enclosure, and in my case, I'm gonna be down firing these, we can have these very, very close to the floor of the vehicle without any concern that that subwoofer is going to hit the floor. Another unique design feature, notice that the outside of the subwoofer here, it's squared off on each of these sides. And the reasoning for that is you can take two or more of these subwoofers and you can put them right up against each other. You could have these surfaces literally touching each other and that allows you to fit even more subwoofers within a tight distance. Another cool aspect of this sub, this grill that I took out earlier, they include these grills with the subwoofers. Now, as far as space needed goes on these, for a sealed enclosure, these perform very, very well in only 0.35 cubic feet of air volume. I've already done the calculations and what that means is I'll be able to fit four of these down firing under the seat in the F-150, not even have to do a seat lift, and they're still gonna have enough air volume. And don't be confused because yes, that is a really small air volume, but these subwoofers are designed to perform in that small air volume. I've heard these before in that really tight air volume and they have no trouble getting really nice and low, providing tons of low end output. Again, this is gonna be a fun one. So of course the next step for this build is we have to get everything installed. We have to figure out what wiring we're going to use for everything. So you can check out some of those related videos here on screen. Next time you need help figuring out what gear will fit your vehicle, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield. You can learn more at the link here on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Bart, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And thank you for tuning in and watching.